Hello guys, welcome back to The Crew RMD Story Part number 5 Sitting on the uh, Ducati Panigale R uh, yeah, For a reason, because uh, yeah, we're sort of coming into the subject of uh, calling all units Really, do we really need to talk about this? Well, apparently we do, because yeah, it's part of the game and it's also part of my story in a way Although, uh, in this case, it will be a very short story. After doing uh, all the missions and everything like that, going through PvP, uh, as you saw in the previous video, mostly concentrated on the summit in the Wild Run, which I found, like, the best expansion ever in uh, a game. And then they came up with, like, calling all units. Uh, uh, on that aspect, yeah, was not that interested in it. Um, had been looking on some YouTube videos to see some footage uh, at first. No, was not my thing, and uh, the reason uh, for that was then also that I did not buy it at first. That meant that uh, at the time it got released, people uh, were doing the story missions that came with it, which uh, are also more or less a joke because yeah, uh, in most of those story things you have to like bust somebody. And that means that it takes you 15, 20, 30 seconds and the uh, story mission is finished. Because that's uh, basically what it comes down to. And that is the reason why I'm on the Ducati Panigale. Sina did not buy Calling All Units uh, on the release. Uh, I only had the great missions available, which more or less became available for uh, all the people. Uh, even if you did not buy Calling All Units at that moment. At that moment there was a summit running, uh, the November summit, and we were playing for the Ducati Panigale R as a reward. Now, uh, I don't know how it looked because apparently it's night time. In the game itself uh, I have brightness at 80%, it's kinda okay, I can see where I'm driving, uh, but that is a bit of a problem in this game, is headlights. The strength of the headlights is not that great, but yeah, it is what it is. And that's why I'm driving on the Panigale, because uh, during those great missions, Sina already had every single car in the game. The only thing that they come up with in those great missions for me was the Ducati Panigale. Although we were driving for it uh, as a summit reward, it was still a few days before the summit ended. And uh, I do a great mission, uh, I get a fragment, I get another fragment, and it turned out after 10 fragments that I won this thing here, the Ducati Panigale R. So uh, even before the, the summit was finished, I was already driving this thing. Now there's uh, a few more of those great missions. And uh, to uh, yeah, more or less uh, try to find out um, what was going on there. And the next thing, which is probably uh, more interesting, is like, yeah, it is also there uh, communication wise, something went wrong. Um, it was two years of the crew at the, the time that they released uh, Calling All Units, uh, which also meant that they uh, more or less had an anniversary to celebrate. And the celebration uh, was rewarded with the uh, Hurricane, Lamborghini Hurricane. That thing uh, was the two year anniversary gift more or less to the players and uh, in case you already played the game in uh, December 2014 or January 2015, so in the really early stages of this game, uh, you also get like uh, a two year anniversary sticker on top of it I believe. But also there, they still had to give the uh, reward or the gift uh, to the players, but that uh, also meant that... Uh, yeah, either it was a communication error or something went wrong for sure because the hurricane was uh, also in the great missions and that meant that uh, doing the second round of uh, great missions doing the second round of 10 fragments next uh, to the Ducati Panigale I won this thing and uh, yeah, in a way that was kind of important because um, calling all units was 25 euros um, and as a long-term player, that was it. 
We got a uh, 600,000 uh, Nissan GTR as a gift. If you uh, already were a long time player and you had like the Wild Run already, then you got the Nissan GTR as a gift, which was uh, a bit of a problem. In my opinion, that they gave us like just 600,000 in game currency car. They should have given us like 50% discount, I guess. Because, um. Yeah. We had to pay 25 euros as a long term player and we got calling all units. But you had a bunch of new players who got like a couple of months before that there was a 30 years Ubisoft and there was a promotion and you could get like the game for free. Uh, the base game, the 2014 version. And then those new players that already got the game for free, for 25 euros they could buy calling all units and on top of that they got Wild Run. So they had the crew, the crew Wild Run and the crew calling all units, the whole package for 25 euros. At the same time they also put 50% discount on the season pass. If you also bought that, then you had everything available in the game for about 35 euros. Why long term players already paid like 75 euros for the crew, the crew wild run, the season pass, everything in total. And then they wanted us to chip up another 25 for the calling all units crap. Because that basically is what it is. Uh, uh, why do I... For me it's crap because, uh, like, for instance, the police chases and everything is uh, a bit of a joke. Before the crew I played Need for Speed World. And there you had, like, team escape with um, police chases with different heat levels. Going from uh, level 1, you're just chased by uh, four towers police... Uh, interceptors. Uh, uh, heat level two. You had uh, dodge challengers with ram bars, uh, which would it make uh, made it already a little bit difficult. Uh, level three. You had incoming uh, armored SUVs, the so-called rhinos uh, that came into play. In heat level four, you had uh, corvettes who, who dropped uh, spike strips. Roadblocks uh, were actually roadblocks. That meant from the left side from the road to the right side, blocked with cars. And if there was a gap, most of the time there was a spike strip in that gap, so uh, all ca that kind of stuff. And then uh, in heat level 5, yeah, complete hell broke loose, and then they uh, added uh, SWAT teams. So you had like uh, four Tauruses, a dot challenger with ram bars, you had corvettes dropping uh, spike strips, you had incoming rhinos, you had SWAT teams following you, and also on the roadblocks. You had some power-up called Juggernaut, which was like a virtual ramming bar you could put in front of your car to sort of disable the roadblocks, but still, it was uh, a bit more challenging, for sure, than if you compare it to the things here. Here, the roadblock is, uh, you have four lanes on a highway, and uh, a few side lanes, a lane in the middle where the light posts are. On the left, you have a really big open field. On the right, you have a forest or a big open field. So basically, uh, you can go through the roadblocks left, middle or right, it doesn't matter. Um, you have power-ups in this game, which half the time you don't even need to use in these police chases. Uh, let's see, using this performance spec, um, Hurricane, let's see what we can do. At least we have a GPS line here in this game. Um, also there, it's kind of important to know where you're going, so that you do not have to like look on your minip minimap constantly uh, pretty important feature I find uh, Ubisoft Ivory Tower put it in there now the cops might have a chance here because it's a pretty narrow uh, two lane road here but it's a bit twisty there are a few uh, points coming up for instance a bridge where they might be able to block me but They're hitting you with all kind of stuff. Um, EMP field, that means, like in this case, I have no brakes. Uh, an EMP shock kind of disables uh, the steering. That's a bit of a more of a problem. And sometimes they use it uh, kind of smart in a way that, uh, yeah, they will use it just on the point where you're braking or where you have to take a sharp corner. So that uh, in that way, it might be a bit of a problem. Like here they always like try to ram you out of the uh, thing. There you go, EMP shock, they are disabling my steering so you sort of have to uh, anticipate on that, slow down a little bit, usually solve it to get control back uh, of the car. 
Other than that, they're putting up roadblocks, which are a bit of a joke. They are uh, saying they are going to ram you, but they are like a couple of hundred meters behind you, so a bit of a problem. I do have power-ups available, but uh, as you can see, uh, I'm not really using them at this moment. Now they're using a speed hack for the simple reason they cannot follow. I'm not even in the circuit spec, I'm just like driving a performance spec. If you hit the nitro a bit, yeah, they are uh, not really following. Sort of cover your line that they cannot cut you. Route has been sealed, uh, not really. Just drive through a barrier and you will be fine. And it goes down like this. I mean, look at that guy. I arrive, the guy goes to the left. They're approaching. They're gonna get uh, more likely uh, aggressive towards the end, that's what usually happens. That is if they ever can catch up with you, of course. The cops in this game kinda uh, adapt themselves to, uh, yeah, depending on, on what you are driving. In this case I'm driving a performance spec, so I'm getting chased by uh, challengers or whatever. I think it's pretty fair to say that uh, Although they hit me with whatever. That's really challenging, is it? They're a couple of hundred meters behind me and uh, I meanwhile uh, arrived to the destination and delivered the crate. That is sort of uh, what the police chases are in this game. I did not use one single power-up to chase them up or to disable their steering or whatever. Because it was not needed. So, uh, yeah, calling all units is a pretty short story for me. Uh, I just did the crate missions here um, to get some cars, more or less, uh, and that was it. Other than that, uh, the police chases itself, uh, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a bug system. You can uh, either drive as a racer like I'm doing now, now I'm just uh, driving as a racer and then uh, you go in one of those missions or you can also put uh, notifications on and then in case somebody hits um, one of those crate things you uh, more or less get called in by the, uh, by the force and uh, you're supposed to help the cops. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, you're gonna have more trouble from your so-called colleagues aka the other police cars because they're gonna ram you all over the place uh, because they can't handle their car or whatever so if you switch to a police car uh, then you sort of become the police agent and in that case um, in that case you are like part of the force and uh, you need to bust the racers if you bust the racers they're also uh, just like in PvP you have like a personal league and a crew, crew league uh, also in the police you have a racer leak and a police leak and you can sort of work your way up to uh, platinum one or whatever uh, it is but it's a bit bugged um, so you are a police officer you bust a player you might just uh, end up losing points instead of winning points because uh, the system is totally messed up so uh, the roadblocks are a bit of a joke the uh, leak system is a little bit bugged, uh, situations like that. So people did not bother much about this uh, leak or, or playing the cops. Uh, a lot of people just played it with a friend, uh, tried to get like platinum police 
uh, league or whatever that's called. And once they were dead, they stopped playing it. Once they had uh, the cars from the great missions, they stopped playing it. In general, there might be some people out there who actually like doing the great missions. That's possible, but uh, the majority of the community probably didn't. If you go over the forums, if you go over the uh, all the groups and uh, things that are out there, you will actually see that uh, most people don't really like the Calling All Units expansion. It was a bit of a joke. So, uh, yeah. That sort of uh, covers the Calling All Units, because there's not much more to say about it. Um, basically, it came down to this, uh, because I didn't buy it in, b in the beginning, uh, and I was one of the first ones to uh, bring out that Lamborghini Hurricane. I made a video of that. That video... Um, sort of form for uh, for the size of my channel it sort of went viral uh, at that moment I had like six seven hundred subscribers and uh, I have about sixteen thousand or eighteen thousand views on that video probably because I put win in the title I saw the uh, the title was something like let's try to win the Lamborghini Hurricane and uh, basically I did a great mission I won the car went to the performance tuners and the circuit tuners uh, got the spec tuned it a little bit and that was it. I made a video of it. Uh, due to the numbers I got on that video, it basically meant that uh, that video yeah, brought me about 15 euros or something uh, from the ads. And so uh, if I subtracted that from uh, the full price that we had to pay as long-term players, 25 euros, yeah, then it basically came down uh, to about 10 euros that I had to pay if I bought Calling All Units, which I then did at that moment. And uh, I basically paid for the cars. So, I, uh, in my opinion, the calling all units is a uh, car pack. The police things don't work really well, the league system is bugged, uh, and so on. So, yeah, the police features of that uh, thing itself, not that interesting. But you have a few new cars and a few new bikes, which uh, also came with the calling all units, which sort of makes it interesting uh, if you want to have everything in the game. So I, in a way, uh, paid for it uh, as a car pack. That's also, if I put like everything in order, um, I would say that uh, on number one, it's definitely the crew wild run, with the competition and everything. Like, like that's for me like the best version of the game. Number two, uh, the base game, uh, the crew 2014. That will be my number two because it's like, yeah, you have the big map. Uh, you have all these skill tests you can do, uh, you have PvP, multiplayer racing, important feature as well. Um, and so, yeah, you can have some fun in there. Um, at number 3 and number 4, I would say uh, the Season Pass. And then uh, at number 4, the Calling All Units. Why do I put the Season Pass before Calling All Units? Seen both or more or less a car pack, at least that's how I see it. Uh, well, the Season Pass at least had two exclusive cars. The Ferrari 458 and uh, the McLaren 12C. People have paid for that and so uh, what we also did not really like very much was that both of those cars were suddenly turned into a police car when they uh, came out with calling all units. Although uh, they came a little bit later, the McLaren and then uh, even a couple of weeks later this Ferrari, but it is it's an exclusive season pass car which people paid for, they put a police livery on it and suddenly it was available for everybody who had calling all units, which suddenly made those uh, season pass cars not so exclusive anymore. Bad move Ubisoft, that was a bad move. We paid for this season pass cars, exclusive rights, let's call it that, and then you put a police livery on it and I am aware that uh, if you have the season pass cars you also have a performance pack of this car and uh, if you have the police uh, version you only have like the circuit spec. I am very well aware of that. But especially this circuit spec is kind of oh, uh, one of the OP cars in circuit and uh, yeah, suddenly everybody could drive that without getting the season pass. Uh, that was a bit of a backstabbing for season pass holders. Just like it was a bit of a backstabbing that long term players who already had the wild run had to pay full price for calling all units. Everything considered relating that calling all units that makes it to me a uh, not so good expansion pretty simple but that also uh, yeah more or less covers uh, my story I mainly focused on the summit uh, not a fan as you can just hear uh, from this calling all unit expansion 
nevertheless, we get a few new cars, so uh, I, I consider it to be a car pack. And I look at it like uh, at that, and then uh, I have a couple of new cars and new bikes, uh, so uh, in that way, it's kind of okay. That uh, brings us to, uh, yeah, sort of, more or less, uh, playing around in the summit, further down the road, and uh, sort of ignore this calling all units thing. Um, the only thing it was good for as well was uh, here, like here, uh, maximum bucks. Uh, I had like seven, eight hundred thousand crew credits. So uh, with all those new cars coming from the communal units, I can finally use those bucks and crew credits for something. So I upgraded every single car to 1497. Uh, I bought all the colors and the rims and everything like that. So I used my nine million bucks. I used a couple of hundred thousand crew credits just to upgrade those cars as fast as possible. So and then we were like, uh, I don't know, February 2017 or something and I had every single car in the game and I had every single car at 1497 level, like two or three months after uh, calling all units came out. Because also that uh, was something that came with the calling all units. We suddenly went from level 50 to level 60, cars went from 1299 to 1497 which more or less gives him a bit more grip, a little bit more acceleration uh, but in most cases 1299 is still the best case uh, monster spec drag car, uh, yeah 1299 and then uh, put a level 60 on the differential or on the weight which makes it 1317 which probably give you the fastest times in uh, drag but like for the monster specs, uh, if you put them on acceleration, for instance in a monster arena, 1299 full acceleration, elef 11 um, level 50 parts with acceleration bonus will actually give you uh, a few seconds within that run that you have spare time, because it's just faster at 1299. Which is also the reason that uh, the cars that I use the most in monster spec are back at 1299. Uh, Ferrari 458 here for instance, uh, the normal car, this one is at 1497 because that's a police car, it doesn't matter that much. But if I go into uh, circuit spec and I go down the list, you will actually see that uh, there are certain cars like the Celine, like the Ferrari 458, that I put back at 1299 because they just function better at 1299 than at 1497, at least they do for me. For some other cars, especially muscle cars that were always like wheel spinning, uh, you get a bit more grip on 1497. For those cars, the 1497 probably works better, but not for like this car, Pagani Huayra I also brought back to 1299, a um, couple of monster specs, uh, there are some cars that are just functioning better. That is uh, sort of concerning calling all units, which uh, makes us more or less gonna leave the game now, because uh, we also have to talk about uh, the community. How did I get involved in the community? Uh, at first at the forums, was looking at the forums, get some knowledge uh, about the game and uh, then you see like all these threads, yeah, you have like the trolls and the people that are always complaining, yeah, I don't bother too much about them because they're always keep asking the same stories, uh, come up with the same stories, they keep asking the same questions and so on, so it's like, nah. But you have people sometimes um, they ask questions, they are not immediately answered. Uh, if you know the answer, yeah, just try to help out and answer it uh, or more or less in a polite way. Um, if you're really dealing with the trolls and those idiots that are always complaining and uh, or from other communities, which is something uh, I sometimes have a problem with. Uh, I never bash any other community, but the problem is uh, other communities at times do that with the crew community. Crew community is it's pretty good community in that way that we also play other games and we don't worry about it, but you have like uh, Need for Speed guys and Forza guys, they are like, who? it's their community and nothing uh, you say about it, then you're gonna get like bashed because don't touch their community. And everything else is bad. If you have like Need for Speed players, then uh, yeah, everything Forza is doing is bad, everything the crew is doing is bad. And so the same goes for Forza players. If you have like the crew, ho, oh, that's shite, and Need for Speed, ho, oh, that's shite. Yeah, that's sort of. We don't really have that in the crew community. We uh, we play Forza, we play Need for Speed, and you can find a certain title bad or not, but we uh, still play all the games and we don't make too much of a fuss about it. I was reading on the forums, uh, answering some questions, uh, giving some comments, making some threads myself. Uh, so that's sort of how I got involved at first. Uh, then I saw. 
uh, yeah, you have like Reddit. I, I've been a few times on Reddit. Not that interesting uh, personal uh, opinion. Um, you also have the Steam community. I'm also not that active there. But uh, a couple of times I like uh, met some people on the forums and uh, a couple of times uh, TCS always came back. What is TCS? Well, that is uh, the Crew Social. That's a Facebook group. Um, although it's run by people, uh, by players, um, it is more or less supported by uh, Ubisoft. In that way, they very often post something on the website from these uh, from pictures or whatever that uh, people are posting here. If it's a cool picture um, or if it's a cool video, uh, they will occasionally uh, take it and put it on their website. Also, uh, how one of my videos ended up there, uh, one of my runs from the Monster Arena, I think it was, ended up at one point um, on the website. Um, you have, for instance, uh, what else do we have? Uh, Accor, for instance, uh, who reached like uh, the maximum level of award points. So he did everything in the game, full completion at 100%. Uh, Cini was one of the early players, he could do it. Uh, later on, some of the awards got bugged and um, you cannot go to 100% completion. But he did it, uh, that was also on the website. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, I have people, um, the latest one was I think Huera, who did like 10,000 PvP races, which is quite a lot uh, in, the, in the time that he played, and so on. So we have like people showing up there, uh, and that is because they are more or less scrolling the forums, they are also more or less scrolling the crew social. That's how you more or less get involved in the uh, community. Uh, because, yeah, it's not only players that you have here, you have... Um, for instance, uh, UB, uh, Mr. Dr. Pink in is in the game, um, you have um, UB Get Hell is in the game, you have uh, UB Mushy Mushy is also here somewhere, uh, uh, UB Nox is also uh, watching here and there, um, of course you that's more like from Ubisoft side, from Ivory Tower itself, Fergus aka uh, Stefan Belay creative manager at Ivory Tower, he's also in the group. Um, yeah, you have like all these sort of people. So you get like uh, contact with them. Um, some of them I also have on my friends list now. Then things uh, move on and then uh, yeah, and then you have like for the crew too, uh, there are people out there because that's uh, sort of where we're going now. Um, there are people out there who think that nothing happened and they're always complaining. Uh, I signed up for it in September or for the beta and where is the beta and yeah, uh, I have mentioned this before they cannot come up with a beta before they did an alpha before they did some other smaller tests that all happened uh, if you don't if you're not aware of it then you probably weren't invited um, to put it simple uh, I don't know the exact numbers but let's gamble a bit and uh, say that for uh, a few of these smaller tests technical tests that have been happening out there a couple of them have been happening um, they probably invited, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 players, something like that. Uh, then you had a few closed alphas, uh, also those, probably more people. So I would say uh, 5,000 or 10,000 people for the closed alpha that have been playing. That is, uh, if you compare it with the 10 to 15 million copies of the game that are out there, yeah, then those numbers are pretty small. So there is a lot of people who did not get an invitation, who did not play that will always be the case, that is the case in every single game. Uh, meanwhile, there also has been a real life event uh, where not many people know of, uh, which also means yeah, I cannot tell much about it. Uh, the only reason I know about it is because I was there. Pretty simple, uh, and that all means if you add it all up together, it's all under NDA, and uh, that more or less means that I'm under NDA for like about seven times now, I think, including all tests and events and stuff like that. Um, is there anything going to be publicized uh, from that? Probably. Uh, but I don't know when. So at one point there will be a video out there. Uh, I was not the only one there, for instance, on that uh, live event. Uh, there were other players there as well. They have been recording. I'm assuming they're going to edit it into some sort of video. And then at one point you will see it. Um, you will see the video, you will see what we were doing, or they will explain what we were doing there, uh, something like that. Meanwhile, you can also expect uh, some new information coming out towards June 29th. More and more information will come out. Uh, probably also uh, a couple of new trailers. So uh, we are slightly working our way up to The Crew 2. And that means that uh, yeah, I sort of decided to go with this few videos that I've done now. Um, sort of going over my story. How did it all start? What did I do next? Um, sort of 
go through the story, do defection missions, skill tests, uh, switching to PvP, worked my way up there, uh, then I got involved in the summit, and then I sort of, yeah, kept hanging about on the, on the summit, uh, became a summit player with teams, with some good teams, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, then we had calling all units, yeah, which is more or less uh, an expansion that I ignored, and I sort of made it into a car pack. That's what it means for me. Eventually I got it, but if it was not for the cars, uh, I probably would not got it, because I didn't find it that interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's a matter of opinion. I might be people out there who actually like it, uh, although I doubt it. If you're like, if you have played Need for Speed World or other games with like a great police chases and uh, heavy roadblocks and stuff like that, then the calling all unit roadblocks and if you look at those, uh, a bit of a joke. And then you get involved in the community through forums, uh, of course posting the videos uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, had like 5 or 20 subs, I think, something like that, when I started uh, covering the crew. Meanwhile, I have uh, over 1,000 videos, and uh, at least eight, 900 of those are involving the crew, because that's the, the game that I covered the most on my channel. And of course, I also, uh, meanwhile, work my way up from 5 to 20 subscribers, up all the way over 1,000 subscribers. So, uh, that is sort of, yeah, my story getting involved in the community here, in the crew social, uh, on the forums and playing the game in uh, every single aspect of the game I played uh, and mostly uh, involved in the summit and that's also the reason why I say number one, the crew wild run, number two, the crew number three, the season pass and number four, the calling all units that's sort of the ranking from the different uh, packs, expansions things that were available in the game that's my personal ranking for other people it might be different but ranking of importance ranking of uh, fun mode uh, whatever you want to call it that is more or less uh, what is my story that means that we are moving to the crew too uh, as I already showed in a uh, beginning of the first video for those who didn't see it uh, I did uh, Played the crew about 4,150 hours, so uh, which is pretty much uh, considering it I only bought it after the wild run. And I also uh, have the crew 2 in the library, uh, aka I pre-ordered it in November 2017 already. So it's just a matter of uh, when can I download it and start playing it. Well, that will be uh, normally on June 26th. Seeing I have bought uh, or pre-ordered the gold edition, I have three days early access. That means that uh, I will be a few days early and yeah you can expect uh, live streams videos and stuff like that when that moment is there uh, as for now yeah that will be it RMD my story I will see you guys in the next one and bye for now